Yep, go ahead. Lord be with you. Welcome to the Lord's house this day as we've gathered before his good gifts of word and sacrament. Uh, this service, especially for Zion, is, is special because of completion of, of, of confirmation for Bryce and Emma Kendall. Uh, and they'll be coming up for the rite of confirmation. With the rite of confirmation, we'll also be including a, uh, what's called a uh, profession of faith, which is very similar to the rite of confirmation. There's just a little small part that's different. Uh, but we'll also have uh, Charles and Victoria McQueen come up too. So you'll be seeing two separate couples come up today and we rejoice um, all that the Lord has guided them to confess this faith that we indeed join around the Lord's Supper in. And so uh, we give great thanks today for that here at Zion. Also we give thanks because he's hiding in the corner, but Pastor Stinnett is here. He was here at Bible study and uh, his son Lucas or Luke is here too, and as well as Eric's mother. Uh, what's her name? Esther. Esther. So we're glad to have good name, and, and we're good to have her with us today as well. Um, Pastor Stinnett will also stick around just in case you don't stick around for coffee and fellowship. He'll be sticking around to ask, uh, have some Q&A, uh, some follow-up after Bible study if you have anything you want to know about the Lutheran Church in Ethiopia and the good that God is shining upon them uh, with that, that confidence that we have in the gospel purely taught and the sacraments rightly given. Um, there's nothing uh, huge to mention for other announcements I'll save for the end of the service. The only other announcement to share with you is it was, it was given to me to have in prayers this morning uh, underneath comfort uh, for Deanne Rogers. I guess she was a former member of this church and uh, she, she is currently at the Wabash Hospital uh, but it sounds like she is uh, not heading in a good direction and uh, with, with cancer. And so uh, if you want to talk more about that, talk to Linda, uh, wherever she's at out here. And there they are. But talk to her if you have any more questions about uh, Deanne Rogers. Uh, but she is, uh, needs prayers for comfort at this time with, with the cancer that's not going in a good direction. Other than that... We go in the right direction with praise and thanks to our Lord who is always faithful because he has died and risen for us. We do that in our opening service. Uh, reminder, the insert is the salmon color uh, that we have uh, this morning. Uh, the order of service is uh, divine service setting four, so please make sure to mark that. But we open with a hymn of invocation. I love your kingdom, Lord, 651. The Lord bless you this day.
Please rise. We continue with the order of service on page 203. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are fear. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness, confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and cleanse us from our sin. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with the introit as in the insert. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done. His miracles and the judgments he uttered. O offspring of Abraham, his servant. Children of Jacob, his chosen ones. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. We continue with the Kyrie on page 204.
The Lord be with you. And also Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, give us an increase of faith, hope, and love, that receiving what you have promised, we may love what you have commanded. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. nor 
will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter what has been hidden since the foundation of the world. Alleluia. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Alleluia. According to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hid in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into containers, but threw away the bad. So it will be at the close of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? They said to him, yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. At this time, we make confession of the one true faith this morning in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, Light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, beaten of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with the sermon hymn, The Church's One Foundation, 644.
the words of my mouth, meditation, my heart, be acceptable unto you, Lord, my rock, and my own salvation. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Over the past couple of weeks, we have been hearing parables from Jesus about the kingdom of heaven. There are actually seven in Matthew chapter 13. Today, we encounter the last three. Unlike the parables about the sower and the seed or the wheat and the weeds, Jesus gave his disciples no deeper explanation when comparing the kingdom of heaven to be like a hidden treasure, a pearl of great price, or even a broad net. This section of parables ends, as you heard today, with Jesus asking the question, have you understood all these things? And then their quick reply, as the disciples were at that time, yeah. And of course, we would say, probably not. But they understood at least the basics of what he was saying, or so they imagined. Without an explanation, there's always a danger, right, to misinterpret symbolic stories. They can go off in a strange directions when you hear these symbols and these imageries. And frankly, it even will lose the gospel of God's grace given to save sinners. Yet one big help is to know Jesus spoke these parables, these three in to only his disciples. They were apart from the crowds, having gone into a house. Parables shared the mystery of God's kingdom to believers while hiding it from others who did not believe. They just didn't see any deeper meaning to the stories. Since Jesus already called the disciples, they were listening to his word and they believed in him by the work of the Holy Spirit. And so being apart from the crowds, these last parables then were for encouragement and comfort. As once with Israel of old, Jesus has now gone to great lengths for his church and you who trust and follow him. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure or fine pearl, but notice only one is doing the action, and it's not those precious, important things. Whether the man or the merchant, both were highly invested in securing what they found. Certainly the disciples had heard of the high cost it was for following Jesus, right? Sermon on the Mount. He spoke of laying up treasures in heaven as compared to life. To that kind of an anxiety, he proclaimed the truth. You've heard it before. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added to you. Of course, the man or merchant in our parable cannot be us. Because look at the outcome. He sold everything for the field or costly pearl, and he bought it. Such an exchange directs us away from discipleship to the ministry in person and man and work of Jesus Christ. The kingdom of heaven belongs to what God's Son was doing in Israel and for all sinful world. He had the purchasing power to make the exchange necessary to claim it all. Jesus would later say the famous line, the Son of Man came not to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many, to pay it in full. Such a selling of everything as in the first parable meant Jesus was able to buy without exception even the whole field. And so St. Paul states, that it's in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, 
and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. To tell people who bought it all. And so by his death and resurrection, forgiveness won by Jesus goes before the world. A perfect payment kept safe in the gospel. Yes, able to redeem each and every sinner. Actions taken by this man or merchant Jesus also prove the treasure and pearl are ver- valuable. They were the object and desire of Christ. Because remember, in this parable, the disciples were hearing these things alone. And for good reason. Jesus cared about them above all the rest because They were listening to him. His word and presence a grace received, and it made them the hidden treasure or costly pearl that Christ loved to the end. And no pastor could do this, only Jesus, for the whole church and for those disciples. Encouragement and comfort was necessary because they were about to leave that house. And you better know what was going to happen. The disciples would soon see Jesus almost immediately go to Nazareth and be rejected from his hometown. Here, also, within that same time frame about the beheading of John the baptizer. And later, they would know their failure at the cross. Their value those disciples, was not going to be based on themselves, but the love Jesus had for those he called. He even prayed on the night of betrayal. You remember this, that high priestly prayer? I don't pray for the whole world, but I pray for them, for his church, for those who believe in him. And he said, I do not ask for these only, Father, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. You are the treasure and precious pearl to Jesus that he has purchased by his blood. As Israel was once the treasured possession by God at Mount Sinai that you heard this morning, the greater deliverance of God has come by the choosing and calling of Christ from the gospel. His holy Christian church, by the preached word and rightly given sacraments, is now the treasure and pearl of great price gathered before his sacrificial love and giving. And so baptism into God's saving name made you and all in his church a chosen possession, holy in Christ. As you heard, now it so is for the church, out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth, the church, Not merely in one place, but the whole body of Christ that's precious to him. Those who believe in his great love as Savior and Lord. Instead of making yourself good or worthy to that precious value, Jesus bought you at the price of his sacrifice. He keeps you as a hidden treasure. Yep, that's the way it's going to be. Under changes and risks and dangers and toils of life, To believe in him. So much so, go in my study and go look at the picture in my wall. If you've never seen it, it's been there for a while. But this very parable has Jesus quoted, pulling the treasure out of a field, and it's a casket that's marked by a cross. Out of all the many other pearls, you are prized for God's judgment upon his one and only son that saves your life as a gift. And so comforted and encouraged by Christ means that we can keep casting out the net. The last parable, right, to his disciples in that house returns to something similar you've heard before earlier and what they heard. There will be a sorting at the end of the age as with the wheat and the weeds, so with the fish. However, the broadness of this net receives the attention before leaving the house. Unlike waiting on weeds and wheat to grow, right, casting would be necessary. 
since the sacrifice of Jesus was for the world. They would understand that only after his death and resurrection and his disciples would carry that out as a mission to baptize all nations and teach all things that he has commanded and to love what he has commanded because of what came to them and what was made for them in baptism. Comfort and encouragement from the first two parables, you get it, leads to the last parable of casting out the net. Good news in Christ is broad enough to drag in every damned sinner by God's grace at work as a gift. Dragging in this net holds to repentant faith in Jesus Christ. And guess what? It's not going to break. It's paid in full for the biggest sins and the smallest sins, even for your sins. If it were only for the good it might not go deep enough to grab hold of us, and surely that would only leave us in despair. So whether in Wabash or the mission work in other lands in Ethiopia, the net keeps being cast. You are his treasure and costly pearl, but not for selfishness. You can't hide and in these days, you won't be able to hide if you are going to confess this faith. But it is only to trust and follow Jesus. The angels do the sorting at last. But meanwhile, we're not to lose heart with the net he has given. The kingdom of heaven is more than like this or that kind of a thing, but it looks finally to Jesus. He is the one taking action as a man, a merchant, who sold everything. It, was, it is the crucified and risen king who cares for you. While hiddenness in faith, the costly promise comes. It comes today by word and sacrament. Christ cares for you. His great sacrifice notices you just as he has put this love before a whole sinful world. And yet the world still has its own standards and you can't adopt them. But God's love set the price for you in the cross. No need to look around. No reason to feel inferior. Take and eat, Jesus says. Take and drink. The risen Lord brings his sacrificial service and his kingdom has no end. God made the decision long ago for you by grace. His salvation plans are bigger than the work of any of our hands. He made your life precious to him from cradle to grave. You tell your daughters that until you finally have to give that to a preacher to keep telling them all their days. Dragged in by God's net of good news in Christ is to be conformed, St. Paul says, conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. It's a new life with new direction, made out of baptism and marked by the cross. Being treasured by God and his son brings us into the resurrection and gift of eternal life. Jesus has gone to great lengths for his church, capital C. And you, here at Zion, and you personally, who hear him today, who trust and follow him. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding be with your hearts and minds. In Christ Jesus, to life everlasting. Amen. At this time, uh, we'll be doing the rite of confirmation, so we'll have those couples come forward at this time.
can find the page number okay? All right. Find the page number? All right. If the congregation wants to pay, turn to page 272 for the rite of confirmation, that is what we're using today at this time. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You have been baptized and catechized in the Christian faith according to the Lord's bidding. Jesus said, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. Whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. So lift up your hearts this day, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Do you renounce the devil? Yes, sir. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, sir. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, sir. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, sir. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Christian Church, in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? Yes, do. do you confess the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from the scriptures as you learn to know it from the small catechism to be faithful and true? Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God and, and faith, word and deed, to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession in church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and have received the teaching of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and have been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And so at this time is the section that we will step away from the reception of members uh, 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 and also now the, the gift of a blessing for confirmation. And so... We continue. Bryce Allen Kendall, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with His grace to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And Bryce's Bible verses Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Emma Elaine Kendall, the almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with His grace to life everlasting Amen. Emma's Bible verse, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John chapter 8, verse 12. At this time, I'll have the congregation please rise and we continue with the prayers.
And let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with heart to believe and with mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that bringing forth the fruits of faith, they may continue steadfast and victorious to the day, and all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and most merciful Father, in the waters of holy baptism, you have united your children in the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, cleansing them by his blood. Renew in them the gift of your Holy Spirit that they may live in daily contrition and repentance with a faith that ever clings to their Savior. Deliver them from the power of Satan and preserve them from false and dangerous doctrine that they may remain faithful in hearing Christ's word and receiving his body and blood. By the Lord's Supper, strengthen them to believe that no one can make satisfaction for sin but Christ alone. Enable them to find joy and comfort only in him, learning from this sacrament to love you and their neighbor, to bear their cross with patience and joy until the day of the resurrection of their bodies to life immortal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Amen. Don't go anywhere. And so Bryce and Emma, going through confirmation, have already received and has been my practice uh, to give a hymnal and a Luther small catechism. Um, and so we'll do that for you guys now as well. So there you go. I also put together some new member packets uh, that really the credit goes to Diana for putting them together, but they're ordered by my thoughts. Um, but nonetheless, uh, I pray that these things will help you understand a little bit more about the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod because they come from the Wisconsin Synod, if you guys are familiar with that one. Um, but nonetheless, this will, guys, will help you guys to hopefully orient a little bit better to what we have here at Zion and, and the good that God wants to do, not just for you, but through you here at this church. And then one last thing is that when you come up for communion, I didn't get a chance to talk to you, you can receive communion either by your hand, as you might already know, or you can receive it in the mouth too, if you like to just open your mouth and be good to go. So other than that, the Lord bless you and keep you safe to life everlasting. Amen. At this time, we continue with the prayer of the church. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the church throughout the world, that the gospel of Jesus Christ may go forth unhindered, and the Holy Spirit bring many into this fellowship of the redeemed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for all God's people redeemed by the cross and resurrection of Christ, that we may pursue his kingdom with all our hearts, souls, and minds, and bodies. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this congregation, for God's kingdom that goes forth from this font, altar, and pop pulpit, for ministers of the word, especially pastors, as he considers the call extended to him, and for those who serve in Christ's name here and throughout the world, especially pastors to net, and his family, the Lutheran Seminary, Mother Seminary in Ethiopia, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our synod, for the delegates and leaders meeting in convention, that they may deliberate wisely, abide in the word, and uphold faithfulness to our confessions, and elect people who will be faithful to their offices entrusted to them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the word of God to be the foundation of the homes, that husband and wife may be united in this faith and hope, and that children may hear and be nurtured in this word by faithful parents. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for our president, our governor, and all who make a minister and judge our laws in this land, that they would lead with wisdom, seeking what's best for all in accord with God's will, and that we may be good citizens and neighbors. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those burdened by sickness and any affliction, especially for those listed in our prayers, looking to comfort for Craig, Timothy, and Deanne, Diane, Diane as she suffers from cancer and its, in its continued direction and, and that it may indeed give her peace, even amidst these things of death itself. To be with all those listening in our prayers for healing this day and to be with our shut-ins, Pat, Ruth, Alma, and Sue, that they may await healing and deliverance in the firm conviction that nothing can separate us or them from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who partake in Holy Communion today, that they may do so rejoicing that Christ, whom they receive in this sacrament, also intercedes for them at God's right hand. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the faithful witness by those who lived and died in Christ, that we may at last be joined with them in the marriage supper of the Lamb in His kingdom that has no end, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Hear the prayers of your people, O Lord, and grant to us all things good and wholesome and keep from us all things harmful. Give us contentment that trusting in your mercy we delight in your saving will where, where the last are made first by your generosity and grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with the offering. Please rise. We continue with the service of the sacrament on page 208. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father. Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love, shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally, because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity. All who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth, our Lord, heaven and earth are full of flame, shout the glory of your name, sing Hosanna. Oh. 
Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. And in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us then as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, you take the sin of the world away. Oh, Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God. Welcome. Take and eat the true body of Christ for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. The Lord's true body and blood be with you in body and soul to life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. The Lord keep in your baptism, child, that you grow in his grace and mercy, that he has promised to keep you safe as the good shepherd of his sheep. Amen.
keeps you safe to life everlasting. Amen. Take care.
We rise and continue with the Nuke de Menace on page 211. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come and the holy sup of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage for the day of his coming. We may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Be God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. With the peace received from our Lord, we conclude with a final hymn In Thee is Gladness, 818.
A few announcements for us today to consider. A reminder that following the service of coffee and fellowship time, uh, we have our birthdays today to celebrate for the month of July. And also, uh, Pastor Stanette will be here uh, to answer some Q&A. Uh, so if you want some good questions on what's going on in Ethiopia, I'm sure he'll be able to fill you in. Plus, he was a tripoint pastor in Montana. So that's even farther out west than I even understand. That's really sparse. And uh, he was talking about a bit about that as well uh, in Bible study. Some other announcements. Uh, please do not forget the Life Center Banquet sign up. We want to get some ticket tickets uh, purchased. We will buy the table. Um, whether people sit at that is a different question. So please make sure uh, if you have not gone to go and uh, consider that as well. Thankful uh, also uh, for the visit of Pastor Snett being able to make it and see us. It's been hard for him to arrange things and times, but uh, if you did not know and did not hear from me, he is finishing classes and moving into his dissertation time, and that's kind of a crazy time as well um, of what's going on in his life and his family, but we're thankful that he could make it today and visit us. Um, August newsletter should be out and good to go. Uh, other than that, uh, please, where are my new, my new ones who received today? So uh, you guys meet me in the back so everybody can greet you here at Zion. So that's the most important thing is people to see you, all right? Other than that, the Lord bless you this day and the richness he has provided for us in Jesus. Uh, let us not forget that in the end, these parables, at the very end, were preparing his disciples to go leave the house. And that's what we have to remember, is that finally the home has been made for Jesus by his great sacrifice, far more than in a single place, but for us to be at this joy of knowing how he has treasured us all our days, and to cast that net broadly, that we can come to him with good cheer and others with us. God be with you in your baptism. Amen. Oops, I forgot an announcement. Announcement? Go ahead, sorry. Oh, that's right. They're doing it now. <laughs> So Jim and April are leaving us, as we know, and so they've been deep-rooted members in this community for a very long time, and, uh, and so they'll be missed, but uh, Lord be with you, and you can always visit. God's peace be with his people today, and go in that peace. Amen.